OMG, like seriously? Hi, it's Fifi, and you are like totally tuning in to the Vintage View podcast. And now brace yourselves for the ultimate hosts of awesomeness, Scott and Sam. Like, take it away, guys. Me, yow. Hello, once again, retro gaming fans. Today's episode is brought to you by... SEGA! All right. We will be discussing all things Sega. Everything. Yeah. All of it. Hey, guess what? All of it. You see a new face down there? If you've seen any of the Vintage Gamers videos from before the podcast, you may recognize that guy from when we were playing a first play Friday in a bar. Yeah, that was weird. I know. I was able to drag Scott into a bar once. I've been in a bar a couple times before that, even though I don't drink. Everyone else drinks. Scott, being in the same bar three times doesn't count. It was like four times. Anyway, so before we start talking about Sega, I have been asked some questions from my friends that I feel we probably should address. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of which, who is Fifi? If you listen to any of the outtakes we had in the past... Sam had an intro that was something along the lines of, uh, you may recognize me from some videos such as Who Ran Over My Cat? The Fifi Diaries. Yes. That's where Fifi came from. Currently, Fifi is not a real person. It is an AI-generated voice, which is admittedly very, very good. And, uh, you know, maybe in the future, we'll have Andrew doing that kind of thing instead uh, of Fifi. Maybe it'll sound better. I don't know. Yeah. Now, another question that I'm was asked. Gonna, you can't call me Fifi. You cannot call me Fifi. No, we'll call you uh, Andrefi. I don't know. We'll call you Fufu. <laughs> now, the other question that was asked to me, which we'll probably have more later, is if we're a video game channel and a sub- video game podcast, why do we do a thing about uh, Saturday mornings and childhood collections? And the way I see it, Most retro gamers are also into nostalgia and all that other stuff. And let's face it, we're not professionals. We don't claim to be. And we just stick with topics that we know, and that's where we're talking. I I have an opinion. (sighs) Okay, what is your opinion? It's called the Vintage View. Mm -hmm. That's why. It's called the Vintage View. Are you trying to say we're all old? I mean, not for nothing. I'm turning 35 in a couple months. Dude. Scott's turning however old Sauron was. Well, at the time of this recording... In like... Well, at the time of the recording, Sam is about to have a birthday. Yeah, and literally. I will have a birthday in three days. At Sam. time of recording, Scott still <laughs> forgets to remind me that he was born. So, happy really? birthday, Scott. Really? You're, you're going to go there? However, at the time I of the recording... you were assembled out of spare parts. You're a weirdo. And that's why we're friends. So, anyway, as we're getting off the rails, what? We're like uh, three and a half minutes into the, into the episode and we're already off the rails? Yeah. So, Sega. Sega! Yes. And Sega. I hear crickets. All things Sega. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll take up the, you know, the baton and run. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll blast process through this. Basically, let's just talk about Sega. Company, the, uh, the consoles, the software, or in some cases, lack thereof. I see what you did there. So, Sega, do you want to get started with... You know, our thoughts on Sega, or do you want to kind of get a little bit into their history or, you know, things like that? That is a good question. Uh, where should we start? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I grew up with uh, I grew up with a Sega Genesis and had no knowledge whatsoever about it. It was just the big black box that played the hedgehog game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're so young. Nah, you're getting old now, so. Anyway. 
So uh, I'm going to send you a hat to cover up those grays. So, wow. And the sad not thing all is, of us red locks like Sam. And the sad thing is, I got all this gray hair started when I worked it with you. Probably. Oh snap! Probably. Hey. Damn. I'm a stressful guy. No, the job was. You know, it was. Anyway. Oh yeah. So let's kind of give a little bit of background about Sega. Sega is not a Japanese company, as we were led to believe growing up. Well, it is now. Originally, it started as service games. I'm sorry, standard games in 1940 in Hawaii. They uh, provided games for military bases. Um, Then in 1952, they renamed service games of Japan. And then eventually they, they merged with uh, another company and then, well, Rosen Enterprises and became to be known as Sega Enterprises. And then their sure first arcade it? game yep. was Periscope in 1965. I didn't know any of that. That's actually cool as hell. Yeah, yeah. I should, I should send you a book to read, but you don't know how to read, so that, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know how to read. Yeah, the first, first pawn shop read. manager that doesn't know how to read. Uh, I'm kidding. Growing up, growing up with the uh, say, I had both versions of it. I had the uh, the 16 bit with the slider, and I had the uh, the one that just had the power and the and the reset buttons. You're talking about model one and model two. Yes, sir. I always. Well, actually, I shouldn't say always. When I got started, I was playing on uh, a friend of the family's uh, Sega Genesis, and it was the Model 1. And the first game that I remember playing was actually Altered Beast, which is pretty much the first uh, launch game for the Sega, I think. So I had more experience with that, and it wasn't... until after I got myself a Super Nintendo that I got a Sega Genesis. I don't remember where it came from, where I bought it, but I remember that's that's kind of when I got my started. So mine was kind of in the mid to late, uh, closer to late 90s when I first started playing a Sega. As with everything for me, my first introductions at a friend's house, uh, not the one that Scott and I usually refer to, but there was literally a kid down the street and for whatever reason, like, the neighbor kid had a Nintendo, uh, an NES, and then a couple doors down, they had an NES. But across the street, that family seemed to be like, they seemed to be like the Sega family. So that was the first time I saw a Sega Genesis, but he also had um, a Sega CD attached to it. Nice. And it, for me, I was, again, just familiar with the Atari and the NES, and it looked pretty interesting, but... I wasn't sure what the heck it was because, you know, there weren't a lot of kids in the neighborhood that had a Sega. So it was odd for me. Uh, it, for me, like, my first game that I remember on it was, is, I mean, no hate, but, like, it, it was Sonic. Because I was, I, I, I'm a 90s kid. Sorry. Uh, sorry to you. Uh, who who would hate on, on Sonic being your first game? That That is... Well, that's the classic Sega game. It yeah. is, but I'm looking at you over here, Mr. Gen X. Gen X, really? I am not Gen X. I am not millennial. I'm somewhere in between. Cuz Gen okay, X stops boomer. like 2 years before I was born and ends 2 year or start or the millennial starts 2 years after I was born. So I'm stuck in that little no name I think they call it Zennial, something like that. Okay, yeah. boomer. I am not that old. Anyways, uh <laughs> So, like, that was my first game. And I remember I was introduced to the NES uh, not too much longer after that with <laughs> with a broken copy of Duck Hunt. It was the uh, it was the Mario Duck Hunt uh, was it, two game was cartridge. Was it broken or was the game just malfunctioning? I could not access the Mario part of it. I could only access Duck Hunt. Oh, that's weird. I would go to load up Mario and it just it wouldn't work. So does not. Compute. I didn't get to play. Yeah, I didn't get to play Mario until I was a man. 
When is that happening? Um, sometime this week. Oh, okay. <laughs> my, my wife said that my parts were arriving soon. That's awkward. Anyway, <laughs> so give me. I want to ruffle a couple of feathers here. Uh oh. Because uh, here we go. Yeah, there was a famous video that was put out probably close to ten years ago, where a famous internet celebrity, uh, who I will not name drop, uh, had a retrospective on all his consoles, and he said the Sega Genesis was competing with the NES. And people lost their minds. Oh, no, it didn't. It was competing against the Super Nintendo. But here's the thing. When did the Super Nintendo come out, Scott? It came out after Sega Genesis. Sega Genesis was, was getting its stride several years beforehand. But you actually want me to go find you an actual date? I mean, that's kind of why I asked you. Uh, you're going you're gonna to be annoyed. Scott, you, here, don't, you? you don't just have this knowledge? Like I said earlier, we are not experts. So, September okay. 9th. Well, actually, no. Uh, it was it was shipping in, in small quantities in uh, September of uh, 1991. But it looks like um, North the official North America release date was August 23rd of 1991, where Sega Genesis is still trying to load here uh the release date on that one is as fast as my internet connection is um august 14th 1989 so you are at, or that guy was absolutely correct it was originally competing with correct. the as NES. far as marketing yeah as far as marketing it was absolutely competing with the nes mm -hmm. but as far as like the playground mindset of Genesis does, and you can't do that on Nintendo versus, Genesis you know, does what I Nintendo love Mario. Does. Exactly. Um, yeah, in, in the childhood playground mind, yes, the Sega Genesis was competing with the Super Nintendo. But as far as the marketing, as far as sales there for a short period of time, a few years, the Sega Genesis was competing against the NES. And if you want to send any hate mail, Scott, what's your address? Yeah, no. <laughs> Where's my phone? I'm going to go ahead and get Sam's address and read it to you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, I never heard that. Sega does what Nintendo don't. That's amazing. That is. Dude, you're not old enough to remember really those commercials, man. Remember, I've got no, 10 that years is, on that you. Is, Sam that has is like seven years on you. Marketing. So. What was your favorite Sega console out of every single one, from from the Sega 1000 all the way up through their ill-fated Dreamcast? Game Gear. All right. Ooh. That's a pretty good choice, actually, which is basically a Sega Master System but portable. It was, um, <laughs> it was the world's ugliest Game Boy. Yeah, it didn't have nearly as good battery life, but it was cool because it was color. It it was full color. It was um what I think it was 20 uh, I think it was 21 bit sound. Yeah, I don't remember. I could look it up, but and, I don't really care to. And it, it was massive. Not searching. No, I just didn't feel like doing it. Now, my favorite system some people are not going to know this one. So I'm going to pull it up on the browser. It is the Sega CDX. You could throw two AA batteries in it and use it as a uh, portable CD player. Just carry it around, plug some headphones into it. Or you can uh, connect it to your TV, plug controllers in there, and either play a Sega CD game or a uh, Sega cartridge, or Genesis cartridge. That was my favorite system that I owned. It, uh, I don't know why I sold it. it was, I'm stupid when I did that. Because they sell for ungodly amounts these days, but that was my favorite have, uh, console. We all have moments of stupidity. Yeah, yeah some more than others. That. <laughs> now, for me, that's that's kind of a complex question due to the fact that I started off with uh, I traded the friend the Dual Shock controller for my first Genesis. That was my first Sega console ever. So, 
starting out, I had a Genesis, and I really liked it. But as I grew older and started acquiring more things, I have to say probably the Sega Master System. Which version? But you do bring up a, you do bring up a good point. Uh, the first one, because that's all I've got. All right, um, I'll give you that. But you do bring up a good point, is the fact that the Game Gear is pretty much a portable one. And that would definitely be a close second if they weren't quickly deteriorating. Because as many Sega Game Gears as I own, I even have one of those, oh, what is the, the, the company that made the knockoff, but it was licensed, and it was all black instead of, like, the, the gray. Um, I can't remember the company's name, but Tactoy? it's made out what, of cheap plastic. Was it Hyperkin, was it? No, no I think it, it, it was, was It was actually, in like, 90. No, this is, like, way back in the 90s, where Sega was like, hey, we're sick of making these, you go uh... ahead and do it. And they allowed them to make it. It was made out of cheaper plastic, and, and if you dropped it, it basically shattered. Uh, even that one's made out of the same stuff, or as internally, so it's deteriorating. But the thing is, yeah, if they were in really good working order, that would definitely be a close second. Yeah, and I'm trying to look for a copy of it. I'm not seeing it at all. So I will uh, say... Uh, oh, God, I forgot about the Sega Pico. <laughs> I will say oh, that yeah. uh, the only reason why I said Game Gear was because I only owned one for about a week. <laughs> that almost sounds no, like I, that almost sounds like me and the Atari Lynx. I bought that and returned it five hours later to Bookman's because it took less than less than uh, forty five minutes to drain a full set of of uh, AA batteries. And it took eight at a time, mind you. I think it was eight. And it drained them in like 45 minutes. So I'm like, I don't want this. Uh, I got the Game Gear for my birthday. Mm -hmm. and, I, and my dad took it away. And I never saw it again. Oh, well, that's a useful parent. So, yeah. It's, um, it's not just nostalgia. It's a... Uh, I got to play 20 minutes of Sonic on it and... <laughs> that's funny uh i for ones that i had though like with the genesis one and two i will say of those two the two was my favorite because it was sleeker it was slimmer mm -hmm. um and also you could you could move it from room to room and not worry about it stopping working that makes sense okay i couldn't touch, uh, when i got when i had an nes i couldn't touch it like I could put a game in it. I could take a game out of it. That was it. If I wanted to move it, I had to call my mom. As per the Wikipedia, the Game Gear was discontinued in 97, but it was re-released as a budget system by Majesco in 2000 under okay. license by Sega. Maje so okay. Majesco. There we go. Company. Yeah. But like the original one, like the most uh, you know ubiquitous version is the dark gray one. When the Majesco one came out, it was much cheaper, and it was like a dark black color. It makes sense. But yeah, I know Tectoy took over manufacture of it, and I think they're still making them in, in uh, uh, Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm double-checking real quick here. Toy Brazilian Toy Company, headquartered in Sao Paulo. Yeah, they're they're best known for producing and distributing Sega consoles and video games in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Everything's got to be made in house. Really? They made a Dreamcast and a Saturn. That would actually be kind of cool to have a Tech Toy Dreamcast or a Tech Toy Saturn. Got Don't act so surprised. Here, okay. I'm on there. I'm on I, the I, I a, What? I have, a, I have a question. What's oh, a random a... game? Oh, never mind. We're doing something else. No, I'm Scott's looking at Wikipedia. No, I just pulled this up. What was your, what was your question? Uh, what is the most random game that you remember on the on the, on the Sega? Uh, well, actually, it's Sega Sega Genesis or any Sega. Any Sega, just like a random game. 
Dude, the far superior copy of Lunar Eternal Blue. That's a random game. That's very random. A game uh, I shockingly, I've heard of it. Shockingly, well, I've heard of it, probably yeah. because of you. Well, they also re-released it on the uh, 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 PlayStation. Hmm. What about you, Sam? Um, I mean, I'll go for the lols and balls. The fighting game where everything was oh. made out of balls. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean by the lols and balls? What the heck? Okay. Yeah, it, it literally just the fighting game called Balls. That's amazing. Wasn't it B-A-L-L-Z? Yep. For me, I can't remember the title of it. But you guys know who the Noid is, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. He had a video game on the Sega Genesis um, where you had to play as the little red dot from the 7-Up logo and try and no, defeat were, the Noid. Those were... I think two different games, because um, I uh, there was a Seven Up Cool Spot game for NES. I don't know if there was one on Genesis, but I'll double check. And then no, there you're was you're flipping Noid. things. What? No, you're flipping things. Yeah, the Cool Spot was Sega Genesis, and then Yo Noid was NES. Hold on. Now I'm googling. That, now I'm googling. That makes absolute sense for me to be wrong. So. I'm just going to go with my random game being Echo the Dolphin Jr. Okay, Yodnoid was on... Actually, it was on NES. Now, let's see. Cool spot. Do, 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 do. Um, actually, Mega Drive, Master System, Game Gear, Super NES, Game Boy, MS-DOS, and Amiga. Hey, we're not talking about Nintendo. You mean Nintendo? I failed you. Well, no. What I'm I saying, have, what I, I'm saying though, is the Cool Spot game was on Sega and Super Nintendo. So we we both kind of got things wrong, but whatever. Who cares? I think it is ironic. As a man who has gone on so many episodes of this podcast, me, and been completely and totally wrong because my memory is horrible, is the one that pulls through one time. Hey. Hey, you're bound to be right at least once. Hey, if I keep saying the same damn thing over and over. I'm just going to, you know, scorecard. Scott, zero. Oh, no, Sam, one. Scott, zero. I keep hey, forgetting that, that my screen's weird. That actually happens all the time. Okay, fine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct myself <laughs> there and just go with Echo Jr. That's my random game. I might actually have Echo Jr. I'm just not sure I ever played it. I... But Googling it. It brings up there was a Sega Club series of video games. Is that like their little kid series or something? Junior. Yes. I had, so when I was a kid, I had the Sega Club copy of Echo Jr. It had the little gold, um, like, the little gold badge on it. Well, the one that's on Wikipedia has a weird, different colored logo, as you see on there. Why is it not showing? I'm like, I don't see nothing. What are you talking about? Yeah. Is my browser source broken? Here, I've been trying to pull up the browser every once in a while, and you guys didn't tell me it's not showing. The thing is, I didn't say anything because I thought the whole rule earlier of if it's showing on my screen, it's good enough, apply here too. I hate you yes. guys. Yes, I I, that, is, that is the exact one that I had. All right, there we go. <laughs> Here, I'm trying to pull up the everything we're talking about and show it on screen, and you guys are supposed to be the ones, hey, you're you're not showing this stuff on here. So I'm just, like, showing you stuff, and nope. You guys have failed this city. Yeah, apparently I'm green arrow now. Anyway. I mean, you there is that, there is the Kingdom Come version of Art of Ollie where he is a, a big dude. He's not fat. Anyway, back to in the kingdom of he is. Anyway, we're not talking about comics right now, unless you want to talk about Comic Zone, which is your favorite game I can, ever. I seems. can talk about Comic Zone. Holy, holy sheet balls! I can talk about this Comic Zone because <laughs> you're a weirdo. No, we all have our favorite games. You that can probably talk about Comic Zone the same way I can talk about Dragon Quest. No, actually, I think I talk about Dragon Quest a lot more. 
like Comic Zone was formative for me, man. So I bet you're gonna be first in line to watch that movie when they come out. I didn't even know a movie was coming out, so yes, absolutely. Well, let me just double check because I remember reading something about it about a month ago. There we go. I am. If you say it's by Warner Brothers, it just means they're gonna cancel it again. <laughs> Sad thing is, you're probably right. Um, actually, it was reported on Collider. Um, Hollywood Reporter, press release from Sega, actually. But where is this? Uh... Hmm. Let's pull this up here. All right. So Hollywood developing feature film, blah, blah, blah. Press release. Allergies suck. Oh, God. Okay, it's it. the writer was best known for Young Justice. I'm like, why is it showing that? Is it Warner Brothers? I'm not it's okay. I love, I love Young Justice. That's a good show. All right. Um, hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to see if there is an actual official press release. Cult console game. It was not a cult game. It was huge. <laughs> Apparently, there you go. It's Shaq News. Apparently, they're teaming up with Picture Start to bring Space Channel 5 and Comics. Of, oh, God. Space Channel 5. I did not. I, I barely remember that, that one. Wasn't that the one, like the game show one? Um, it's the one with the girl dancing with the microphone and yeah, like kind of what it's showing on screen. The Space Channel 5 VR. Well, that's a VR version, but I think it was originally on Dreamcast, wasn't it? Okay. Who who owns Picture Start? It does not say. All right. We're going to get a copyright strike on this one. No, there, seem, there seems to be no audio. Oh, okay. Uh, Eric, if it was fine. Warner Brothers, I'm sure it would say something. So you're... you're what the heck is that? <laughs> Ugh. All right. I think we're safe. It, <laughs> It was one of those movies shut down already. There'd be someone <laughs> at my damn door. They'd be like, wait, someone mentioned it? Uh, we got to cancel it. <laughs> the accuracy of that statement, though. <laughs> Man. Oh, there's more than one interested person? Cancel it. You know, that's just... Discovery killed it, man. Honestly, Discovery should have bought. It should have gone and partnered with Disney over Sega. Over uh, no, they Warburg. wouldn't have done that because Disney has National Geographic. However, I hear that Paramount Plus and uh, uh, Peacock may actually merge into one sa- one streaming service. Even though they're uh, one CBS and the other is NBC, they might do that to get more market share. But anyway, that's on, where will I watch my wrestling pay per views? Do what? Where will I watch my wrestling pay-per-views? Probably on Paramount Plus or whatever the merged service is. Anyway, let's get back to Paramount Plus merging with Peacock. Mm -hmm. So they will technically be Mount Cock. (laughs) You know, I if I had a beep button, I would have beeped you right there. If I would have known what you were saying. Anyway, let's get back to. I will of all the shit I've said, you. the one time he wants to censor me. Because that was before we get back on the subject. Back on subject, I got to mention since we brought that up, the um, the Paramount Plus uh, Super Bowl commercial is the best thing I've ever seen. Nothing will top it. That was weird. Except no, God. using uh, Hey Arnold as a football. Was that Hey Arnold? Yeah, but having but having John Luke Picard be the one throwing him. All because whatever that football player was decided not to. No, because he said he's not going to throw a kid. Would you throw a kid? Absolutely, I have one. Yes. (laughs) All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself so I can take off my boot because this is it's getting very uncomfortable sitting here. And I won't make a Canadian accent joke this time. Yeah, it's gonna get old. Yeah. It's all right. We all know that's not what Scott's doing. Yeah. But what about uh, SegaNet? What is SegaNet? 
Real? Uh, yeah. Well, I I forget. You're you're the young one. Um, SegaNet was, from what I understand, like a cable, um, prescription prescription subscription, where you could play video games through your local cable provider on your Sega. I think you're mistaken, sir. Oh well, I'm absolutely mistaken most of the time, so that's why I'm here for you to correct me. <laughs> so you're, you're you're telling me it's like OnlyFans, but for video games. Uh, sort of, kind of. There, there was no, that's, something that's Switch. Never mind. Where it was set up, it was through your. It no, the Sega Channel. Uh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Sega Channel was what I was thinking. Of. That's You're see, right. I was I was slowly pulling that up. Yep. I was gonna be like, "Are you talking about this?" Yep, that's the one. Yep. Yep. Okay. See, I knew about Sega Channel. You said Sega Net, okay. and I was like, "What the yeah, yeah, hell?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a, there is a Sega Net too, but that's kind of their their internet something. Or oh, another. that's the Dreamcast. Was it? Dreamcast, yeah. Dreamcast there online. Was, there I searched for Sega Net and that popped up. Oh my god, Quake 3. Yep. Just, just Quake in general. Yep. Hold on. Sega Net Link is an attachment for the Sega Saturn game console that allowed Sega okay. Saturn users to access the internet. So while it was built in uh, natively to the Dreamcast, it was. It went into the cartridge slot slash memory expansion in the back of the Sega Saturn. Okay. okay. But it essentially kind of did the same thing. Yeah, that was my bad getting the Sega Channel and Sega Net Link mixed up in my brain. But sh that happens a lot. So. Yeah, your brain just, just goes. Does not compute. Hey, at least your brain gets to the computing stage. Mine just makes the old modem sounds and then stops. <laughs> it is now safe. Oh, shut down. Yeah. It usually gets about to the to the screen donk, and then it just ends. That almost sounds like you're being a donkey. <laughs> hey, you donkey! Donkey! Alrighty. So, so where do we go next? You and I were discussing earlier, Scott, that uh, Sega were kind of the first to do the whole native internet thing. Uh, with, you know, like we just said, the Dreamcast was natively supportive of internet. All you had to do was swap out either the, the dial-up or the broadband modem, which clipped in to the bottom. Yep. Um, as we're now finding out, there was the Sega Net link for the uh, Saturn, but also having built-in games, like we were discussing in a few episodes ago, the Sega Master System. Mm -hmm. So what we were talking about before, when we were talking about deciding to do this, is I was telling him that the Sega Dreamcast sucked. And before you you send your hate, I don't mean that it, it's a bad console. It's actually one of the better consoles. I'm I'm saying it sucked one because Sega gave up on it. But oh, yeah, no. it was they technically superior to all the other consoles in its generation. Um, if Sega would have kept it up, it was the first online console that was, well, official first one that was had mass adoption before it was canceled it had a freaking web browser and a keyboard and but could it run doom dude super nintendo could run doom yes it could run doom i'm sorry i had to make the reference no actually the the phrase was can it run crisis and these days almost anything can anyway yeah but I'm just waiting for the, the reason for why the I Doom say it sucks is because right. Sega really did not give it much of a chance. No, not at all. Sega abandoned the Dreamcast after I believe it was like 18 months. Something like that. But the games that they did put on there were gems. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, freaking Crazy Taxi. Um, yes. Sam and I were talking about that earlier. It's probably one of the first games that I personally have played, maybe with the exception of some of the older fighting games, that truly felt like it was an exact replica of the arcade game. Mm -hmm. Although like I was know, never familiar I, I can with actually, the I can actually tell you why it felt like an exact arcade game. It probably was. Mm -hmm. they, they used almost the exact same software for the, uh, for the arcade cabinet as well as the, what went into the actual... Uh, home console. Well, one of the, the biggest reasons. One of the reasons the is, is, is. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah, the biggest difference between the two is that the uh, sound system for the cabinet was better than what they assumed you had at home. Actually, I think towards the the late 90s, Sega actually, instead of, well, most arcade games, everything was hard-coded. Um, and obviously yeah. before, before things were hard-coded like that, they actually had um, everything, all of the logic and everything was actually coded in chips or, or resistors and, and transistors and everything rather than actual programming code. But eventually, if I remember correctly, Sega actually started having a, like a modular arcade uh, system that uh, would just run games that they, that they put into it. I'm trying to remember what it was called and, and get more details on it, but it was, it was essentially kind of like a PC where they just put the software on, on, the, on the chip or whatever, and it runs it, which I wouldn't be surprised if, if the Dreamcast actually was running you know, modified version of that motherboard. Uh, Sega put a lot of effort into the Dreamcast that never we never would have gotten to see the light of day of if it weren't for uh, geeks like you. Because the Dreamcast being abandoned as quickly as it was meant that uh, a lot of the people who would have got would have been playing it through the early two thousands didn't get to. Yep. And at the same time, is is home homebrew was the easiest on that console out of any other console, and you know if if uh, if it kept going though, I imagine it probably would have been more pirated because uh, Sony consoles you could burn games, not a problem, but they had to be burned in such a way that there was a defect on the disc that the console looks for to make sure that it's an official, um, that it's an official game. Dreamcast didn't have that. You could literally just burn a game and play it. Now I have, again, th this was my, you know, faulty memory and, uh, Mr. Fact Checker, Scott, you gotta make me Google it. If again? I rem uh, of course, if I remember correctly, <laughs> and most times I don't, I thought that there was like a demo disc or something that was released that had like the the little partition that told the Dreamcast to read the disc and somebody had taken that and then they actually started burning that into each ROM it's, once it was I think so. That sounds about right. Okay. That sounds about right because that way the software would just burn it without a problem whereas mm -hmm. PS the PS2 and PS1 they if I remember correctly, they introduced a physical defect on each of the discs, like it was a corrupted heard, sector yeah. or something, that the console would look for as copy protection. And the only way to play burned games at the time was, uh, uh, you know, modding your console. By now, someone's probably figured it out how to make it work, but I, I haven't done any of that. Just makes me think of the uh, the uh, the hat, the uh, the security measures that are in place on Pokemon games. Gross. You're gonna play one, so don't complain. <laughs> I still think it's gross. Uh, but no, it's like there's a security measure for a. Uh, I think it was the Gold and Silver games, where if you played a, if you're playing a hacked version of it, there's a guy in a Pokemon Center who, you, if you talk to him. He says, man, this is such a fun game. You should really go buy the real one. <laughs> really? Yeah, and then the game would shut off. So if you went, the he the guy would appear in every Pokemon Center, but if you just didn't talk to him, you could play through most of the game. But if you talked to him, it would, it would shut it down. Hmm, interesting. Well, there were, uh, I mean, that, on PC... They did a lot of copyright related things like, uh, or not copy, copyright, copy protection, um, where you had like a cardboard wheel that you had to decode something, put it in the an answer right, just so it will, you know, the game would continue. But if I remember right, wasn't there a, uh, wasn't there a console game that, that did something like that? Actually, it wasn't on Sega. I think it was actually a game that Sam was trying to play. 
Um, Star Tropics came with a note that you had to put in water and find a special code. Which, That's of course, amazing. now, with the day of the internet, everybody knows what the code is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, that's one of my actually right there. That's one of my favorite things about the Sega Genesis, though, was that uh, because it had no cartridge, you had to it would give you passwords when you beat levels. So, that oh, way, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, well, I think originally they didn't, but I think there were some games that started having the batteries. I don't remember. All I remember is that I know uh, Comic Zone didn't have it, but all the Echo games where it would have the little uh. The little code that would pop up with the password, and then the uh, guidebook. There were a couple pages in the back where it would let you write down what the password was. I remember what it was. Sega CD, um, because you could you could put a, a memory card in the Genesis cartridge slot, and you could save your game there. That's what it was. Oh, hey. memory cards. Hey, that was actually the very first memory card for uh, a game console. So Sega's had a lot of firsts. Mm-hmm. I know, you know, I'll acknowledge all the firsts and everything. I'm more of a Nintendo fan than a Sega fan, but you got to admit, you know, when, when a company is definitely innovative, it's funny, Nintendo is considered the innovator now, but back then, you know, Sega had more firsts than anything else. I'm just going to the side so people can see that I have uh, 3DS and Switch and N64 cartridges behind me. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> but isn't the Dreamcast the first video game home console to have a Microsoft operating system? Yes. Yeah, it was uh, Windows, was it CE? Hold on. CE, yeah, console edition, I believe. Uh, you, there, was, uh, there was rumors about there being support for ME. But uh, uh, again, was, with them abandoning uh, it so simple, uh, so early. You know, Windows 8 had so much hate towards it, but it was head and shoulders above Windows Millennium Edition. Uh, Windows ME was the worst operating system I have ever used. Other people may have had better experiences, but I certainly didn't. Hey, so do you know why Windows XP is used at all the prisons? Uh huh. Because it's always locking up. Wow. Yeah. Actually, Windows XP never had that problem with me. Actually, no. It's it's supposed to be Vista, but we're using you know the. Little... Dude, Vista so. was even better than Millennium Edition, man. But anyway, uh, as we speak, I'm sitting here on Windows 10. So, hey, I'm on Windows 10 only because my computer, the processor is one generation too old to officially be supported. I mean, I could literally uh, install it. But I just don't have enough disk space. That's funny. I'm on. Uh, I just put uh, three games on there, three bio, and it's like, yeah, you're never gonna be able to get one. Wow. Well, I don't know what to tell you on that one. You know what? I, uh, you know what I can tell you. If I had Sonic the Hedgehog on here, I would have. Uh, well, speaking of Sonic the Hedgehog on something, what uh, what Sega games do you have on your uh, PlayStation Portable? Oh, you mean the one that you tried to jailbreak for me and it didn't? Dude, it worked for me. Yeah, I got it on. Every game I try to load up doesn't. All right. Well, if I make a trip back to Tucson, I'll have to take a look at it. Um, if you make a trip back to, down to Tucson, you're not leaving. Yeah, I am. I will, I will misery you. Oh, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Grab the hobble block. Uh, but no, I do have on my... No, Nintendo see, I'll, I'll go Switch. visit Maricela, not you. You'll go visit Ashley before you visit Maricela. Dude, I haven't seen Ashley in forever. I haven't talked to her either. I've talked to her not that long ago, but anyways... Um, I have Sonic 2 on my Nintendo Switch. 
on my Switch, I don't have any digital games. I also have games. Sonic Pinball, which is, my, which is by far superior. I don't have any digital games on mine. However, I do have a Sonic Mania and Puyo Puyo Tetris, which are Sega games. Puyo Puyo Tetris. Yeah. Just so for those of you who don't speak Japanese, that's chicken chicken Tetris. That's weird. Most animals in Japan, in uh, most animals in J- uh, Japanese are. To be fair, it's probably a game that you may have seen before. Let me uh, here. That is not how you spell screenshot. Up, um, it is spelled with an O, and not an I. He's gonna pull up some like. Uh, bubble blaster game footage. Giggity, giggity. No. Um, obviously, you know what Tetris looks like. Yeah. This, however, is Puyo Puyo Tetris. It Basically, it was released in the United States as Dr. Robotnik's be- Mean Bean Machine. Yeah. And then, obviously, Tetris was released in the United States as Tetris. <laughs> My soul just aged a hundred years seeing this image. Why? Is it newfangled compared to your old fangled heart? No. Skate Country, the uh, the local skating, uh, roller skating, rollerblading rink here in Arizona, in, uh, where I live, uh, had a machine with that game on. Dr. Robot next mean bean machine? No, it was called, um, I can't remember what it was called, It, but it wasn't Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, and it wasn't Puyo Puyo Tetris, but it was that game with, hold on. Yeah, I'm, I, I know that it was released under another name, and but I can't find it for whatever reason. Let's pull, let's pull up Puyo Puyo on Wikipedia. Wikipedia? Yeah, I'm oh. on the. I'm on the Wiki Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine wiki. Uh, release timeline. It's only mentioning Puyo Puyo, but there it's been. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Puyo Puyo Chronicle. And this sounds like a role playing game of some sort. It's not. International releases Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Kirby's Avalanche. Wow. Yeah, that's one that I remember it as. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't. I, I. Those are the only ones that I, I recognize on here. It might have been Kirby's Avalanche. I'm not. I don't recall exactly what it was, but I just know that that game was at Skate Country. I still find it funny it was, how Skate Country actually made uh, national. Uh, it was a meme that went national because of uh, the Superman. Oh, the Superman water fountain. Yeah, the Superman water fountain. Yep. That's where that's from? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was from Skate Country. I'm pulling up the meme right now because everyone has to see it because let's uh, let's face it. It's funny. He's going to dox me. There you go. There's your meme. I'm honestly surprised that they got away with as much uh, superhero imagery as they did for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Warner Brothers is would come well, actually no. If it was if it was Disney, they would come down on them ton, like a ton of bricks. Warner Brothers would come down and be like, "Excuse me, excuse me, we need to. Uh, you need to take that down." They don't take it down, then someone would be knocking on the door with a sledgehammer. I'm going to take it down if you're not. <laughs> Why did Scott just sound like um, uh, Speedy Gonzalez for a second there? Literally. No, I'm kidding. Don't. Wow. Yeah, I was trying to say undelay. Hey, hey, Gabriel Iglesias worked really hard to get him uncanceled. Don't don't get him canceled. No, actually, that I thought was probably the best choice because he could literally do almost all the voices. Oh yeah, he oh, said yeah. so in his special. But honestly, more more power to him. him to He's my favorite comedian. I want him to have a podcast. I'd watch that, dude. Actually, it wouldn't be kind of cool to get him on. Talk about his experiences with video games. Yeah. Although we ha- we have a better chance of getting uh, uh, Kevin Smith. <laughs> the dream that's been that is 
Kevin Smith has been Scott and I's dream guest for years. Oh yeah. Every iteration, every iteration of whatever podcast we've done, it's always been if only we could get Kevin Smith on. If we get the problem with good. that is the fact that I would sit here and yell at Kevin Smith for about an hour about Clerks Three. Dante was my favorite fucking character, and he got to bang Bacala, who was fucking Rosaria Dawson, <laughs> right? I'm like, man, his character like, did not him. Was, dude, I want, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be Dante like that. Of course, you know, like he said, he would rather shit his own pants rather than upset anybody, right? But the thing is, man, the dude, he had some balls. 37! But the thing is, like, (laughs) how in the fuck do you take Dante and then fucking kill him off? 37? In a row? He could do... (laughs) He could do whatever he wants with his characters. Okay. But man, I fucking love Dante. Every movie... It's because his, he didn't his want writing to do skills were better anymore. than the last one. Like everybody kept asking him for more clerks, and he was like, "I don't want to do clerks." Anymore. Yeah, that's what you do when you're when you're that desperate to like not be involved in it anymore. You kill off well, the main character. Well, one of the things he he was doing is he's like, you know what? I finally have a story. Just like he's finally got a story for Mall Rats too. After malls are essentially dead. There's there's a recurring meme that I keep seeing about uh, how can you want to uh, if you want a goth girlfriend it's too late because we killed off the American shopping which was their you know actually one thing that I was thinking instead of mall rats too being in a mall they should be they should migrate to uh, conventions no I think mall rats should absolutely be, still be in a mall. But it needs to be in a dying mall. Oh, it's yeah. it's gonna absolutely be that unless it takes place in the in the nineties. But those characters are too old to play their their younger versions of their characters. I I can see Ben Affleck still being his, uh, his young self. I don't, let's put a little color in his hair. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so, the, the thing is, so we're gonna go next with with the movie. Kevin Smith cast. <laughs> Hold on. William eventually sees the sailboat, but that motherfucker is ripped now. So oh, yeah. He probably he's... lifts sailboats. <laughs> Dude, I actually saw someone that was trying to do like a moving version of that, of those things. That would be weird. Anyway, let's get back to Sega because otherwise we could probably yeah. talk about Kevin Smith for the rest of the episode and everyone be like, wait, I thought this was um, about something else. I thought they were going to talk about the hedgehog, and instead they just talked about some fat comedian. You know what's funny? We barely touched on the hedgehog. I know, right? He's literally been their mascot for thirty years. And you, know, you, know, you know what the funny like, thing is? Look in the look in the background. We have we have the plumber the instead of instead of the uh, the hedgehog. I also see if you look under Sam, I see um uh, the turtles one. Ninja Turtles one, the one with the impossible water level. Yep, and then above Sam to the left, or to to hit to the left, to the right, is um, to the left, to the Hubert. Left, to the right, to the right. Anyway, I love how I'm some sort of like landmark for finding things in the background. <laughs> well, I mean, to my left, or, well, yeah, to my left is uh, Secret of Monkey Island, and then down uh, to the left of me is. Uh, uh, Rocket League, so Rocket um, League on a re- on a retro gaming show. And God, we were really be talking about ro- modern games too, so you know. Because I got news What's for you, the, though. Um, that Monkey Island that's there is the special ed- or was it? Yeah, special edition. So technically, it's not retro, even though I had the retro theme on it. Okay. Um. Were the were any of the um. The Leisure Suit Larry games on Sega? Yes, I think so. Hold on. Because I know Sega's list is one of the developers for the uh, Magnum, Cum, uh, Magnum Cum Laude uh, uh, game. See. Should I tell my Leisure Suit Larry story while Scott's looking that now up? That you me- now that it's been mentioned, probably. Okay. Because he opened that window. As a kid, yeah, I've opened out. the window and taking a piss right out the window. 
So as a kid, <laughs> we had a computer, and my my aunt was oh like God. really into computers. She did like data entry and stuff like way back in the eighties and stuff. So she went to church, and people had donated games, I guess somehow. And she like I come home from school, and mom has this big box of games. And she's like, here, your aunt brought these over, test them out. I'm like, okay. So I'm going through them, and I see Leisure Suit Larry, but I never touched them because I didn't know what they were. And I was just more interested in, like, the submarine game or whatever the fuck it was. And I'm like, all right. So I'm working my way through them slowly. But I come home from school another day, and they're just completely and totally gone. And I ask questions, didn't get any answers, didn't know why. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, where'd these games go? No answer. It was only later that I realized those were obviously not meant for children. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why those things disappeared. So it was never on a Sega console. But you want to you want to see something that's gonna blow your mind? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's your certain there's your certain audience's warning <laughs> so yeah it, it, and it came out in 2020 oh god oh there were god. two of them there's two, of them. <laughs> there's two. <laughs> oh my god oh my god see when i was thinking that the sega one i was thinking of, like leisure suit larry you know one of these but no, those are PlayStation 2. But oh my god. Oh. Switch. I, I'll be wow. honest with you. I kind of want to get one now. It's on Android too. I'm going to see if I can get it on my phone. Oh god. Oh my god. This is awful. Hang on. Um, Let's see. Um, Nintendo Switch. There we go. Wet dreams don't dry. Wow. Dry. Oh my god. This is Look awful. At the price, this is though. Yeah. Dude. And even even though you're paying one thirty nine ninety nine, they still expect you to pay eight dollars shipping. And I, I understand it's a third party seller, but still. That does not look no, like your suit Larry that I remember. Look at that. He does. No. Yeah, because that's 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 that... That's the actual Leisure Suit Larry. That's he not um, too terribly bad, but damn. that's not the that's not uh, his nephew from Magnum Cum Laude. Oh uh, yeah, you're probably right about that. It's on PS4 as well. But oh my god, that's just that's actually okay. gold. To be honest with you, though, man, that's hilarious. Store, <laughs> I'm gonna. Let's see what let's see what the Steam sales doing for me this weekend. I wonder if it ever came out in the U.S. Now I got to look on here. It's on Steam. I could get it there, but it's not. It's not funny if it's if it's on PC. It is four. It is four dollars on on PC on Steam right now. Nice, but it, it is ninety percent off. It's not funny it's if, it's, if it's on PC though, because you can play any, almost anything on a PC. It's not funny. It's just funny because it's situationally funny. But funny if if you get it on the Switch, to me that's freaking hilarious. Um, dude. Okay. Wait, why was I looking on Wikipedia? My brain just stopped working. Reboot. Reboot. Hey, that was a good show. Dude, we talked about it the other day. Yep. Oh, well, no. damn, son. I, I didn't know. You, I told you that we were going to be recording that, and you're like, mm, and you didn't really. I didn't even know. You told me, and I didn't even say anything because I was, I was in the. Yeah, but it was last Sunday. Yes, last Sunday was the day I finished my fucking move. Oh yeah. Whoops. Well, I'm finally all moved in, and it's I've got this beautiful setup behind me that no one can see right now because I'm not on. I'm not part of this. I'm not part of this overlay yet. Oh, this oh, it was worldwide release. That's what I was looking for. 
So it was worldwide, even though the copies on Amazon are uh, oh. looks like the Eng or the European release. That's freaking hilarious. Well, yeah, because the European release will be the fun version. Oh wow, Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded, which was the which is a remake of the original. That actually had an official release on Linux. That's kind of impressive. I hate Linux so much. Managing a pawn shop has made me hate. <laughs> so one of these days, we're going to have to do a little mini episode about retro game or video game related stuff you've had come into the store. But we'll keep that for uh, next time a, or something. I have a copy of... Um, it's for the PS4, but it's a it's a re-release re of... Uh, Samurai Showdown. Yes, Samurai Showdown. I have okay. a copy of it right now at work. Okay. Well, back to Sega. Yeah. Actually, All right. thinking about that, have you ever had a Sega Nomad come through? Oh. Scott? Yeah. I think you and I both know that if I'd had anything that cool come in, I would have immediately texted you. <laughs> That's a good point. For Literally, those of you listening who I don't know, today with all the extra stuff, and I was like, "I need to text Scott. I need to text Scott." And then they didn't want they didn't want my offer. So, oh, that sucks. For those of you who don't know, the Sega Nomad was literally a portable Sega Genesis. It took it took uh, uh, Sega uh, Genesis cartridges in the back. <laughs> it took it in the back, um, and. 200 AA batteries. Yeah. Yeah, but it, apparently it it had a cigarette lighter receptacle. Ooh. I don't know why I hovered over it. I like that they picked the jankiest looking lighter receptacle. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, now that's an interesting one. I a Mega Jet portable Mega Drive for airplanes and yeah, on airplanes and whatnot. Yeah. That's kind of. I never knew about that one to be honest with you. But you know the one thing that, that they never had that I think would have been kind of cool if they did what uh, the the Game Gear did. Do you do you know what I'm talking about? The TV antenna. Yep. I forgot what it was called. Yeah. But yeah, the Game Gear you could watch TVs on, which was freaking awesome. Well. That was the beauty of having aerial TV, TV before tuner. it turned digital. Duh. You know, there was some, some talk that someone was actually going to try to make an updated version of the TV tuner. Make that would have been nice. I don't know how that would work. But I assume it could be really easy. Just get a, a digital to analog converter and throw it in there. Yeah. Probably a lot, a lot, they would almost... probably a lot more work than... You know what I just said. When, when yeah, TV when we, was converting uh, it, over honestly, to with a with a what is it a three point two inch screen? Yeah, something or like that. Eighty one yeah. millimeters diagonally. I wouldn't. It wouldn't be worth the effort, especially with the. <laughs> Were you just reading the screen for the dimensions? <laughs> especially with the color coding these days, <laughs> I just it wouldn't really work. And it was powered by six AAA bat or AA batteries, Four. with a lifespan of three Four. to five hours. Oh, just six. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I think that's I, how many. I think that's actually how many read, batteries the the links took as well. I can read those specs to make it sound interesting. So that would be that would have been kind of cool. Let's see batteries. Yep, took six AA batteries. Four to five hours. That is BS. I I got forty five minutes. It's because it needed to consume your soul first. Oh, yeah, I gave mine to Millhouse. He traded it for Pogs. I, as much as I love you, Scott, that is my least favorite joke of your That's probably because you don't care for The Simpsons. I love The Simpsons, sir. That, <laughs> that joke, you know, wasn't funny and after, uh, what, season 
seven. I think we're that up was to like season, season yeah, fifteen thousand yeah. today. Season thirty three. How do you know that off the top of your head? Uh, I don't. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to say. You are He's looking over at it. You are collection. wrong, sir. Thirty five seasons. Oh. 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 Okay. So I was off by two seasons. Go. Let me guess. It Go. Came, you thought it came out on uh, or the year you were born. Yes. Nineteen eighty nine. Well, no, if I if I thought that, then I would have assumed it was 35, because I'm turning 35. Man, you're old. Okay, calm down there. Calm down there, fat Gandalf. You oh. shall not pass. Guess. I just need to piss, man. Do it. <laughs> or just get a bucket like I do. No, I'm just kidding. That'd be horrible. Scott, that's literally what I said to you the day you told me I could. Anyway. And thus our friendship was born. So let's talk about Sega's marketing, even though we've been talking for like two hours now. Something like that, yeah. Hour and Sega's minutes. marketing? Yep, because you have I've, not seen it. I haven't seen a lot of it. I've seen some of it. Hold on. I mean, nothing will ever beat the uh, Pokemon commercial where it's like the bus driver and he... Uh, Takes a bus and it gets compacted into a game into a game. Oh board. yeah, it, yeah. Literally, this is a screen from the end of a TV commercial. I'm gonna zoom in on it. Does what Nintendo don't. Okay, so now that I'm looking at this, I have comics that have that in it. Yep, that was their slogan for a while when they were trying to be edgy and. And, uh, you know, everything in the, what, late 90s or mid, was it mid 90s? I don't remember. It, it, would, it, would, be, it would be early to mid 90s. Uh, most of the comics that I have that in are, pre, are pre-death of Superman. Because <laughs> post, uh, post-death uh, was when they started using Sonic as their action. Instead of using, uh, instead of using Alex. I'm no, not Alex. Impressed. I'm actually impressed that you knew that uh, uh, Sonic was not the original uh, mascot. He's I'm even third. more impressed you know about Alex Kidd. He's the third. First was the, um, I want to say his name was Starry. It literally was just like a little like a little happy, smiley star. Then it was Alex Kidd. Then it was Sonic. Let's, let's check your knowledge here. Oh no, you were wrong. I'm I'm pulling up a a picture here. I'm like the picture guy. Oh, you, Reddit, you, why do you have to do that? Every time you pull up an image on Reddit, it pulls it up in a new window with their branding and everything. It's stupid. Yeah, they really like get jerking. But there you go. Okay, so I was I was right that Sonic was after Alex Kidd. Yep. No, yeah. where's the there what there there was a star. Um, I don't know, but I don't. I I vaguely remember Doctor Games. I don't know what Professor Asobin. I don't know, and then Opa Opa. I don't know what that's from. Uh, that's from a, like a very. Oh my god! Yeah, it's it's a, a, a shoot 'em up, but it's fantasy yeah, zone. Fantasy zone. There we go. So, yeah. The game seems pretty cool, but I've Rystar. never Star. It. it was Rystar. Well, that wasn't one of their mascots. He that was, was a popular uh, he was game. To, he was supposed. Uh, Rystar was supposed to be one of the mascots, but uh, something came up involving uh, Sonic got more popular. Originally, Rystar Sonic was supposed to be another yeah. character named Miles. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but I read that somewhere. Well, then why don't you look it up, Mr. Fact Checker? No, I don't yeah. Care. I don't really care. The Sega mascot yeah. you've never heard of. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to. That's a video. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about the, the star on any of these. I mean, there's he's right there, but he's not one of the mascots. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll take my L. I'll, I'll take the L on it. 
But here he is. I mean, that's that's from him. But there's the Comic Zone dude. I think Fantasy Star right here. I don't know about this one. Maybe that's Fantasy Star, and this is something else. So you got Comic Zone, you got Fantasy Star, you've got Ride Star, Sonic, you got Streets of Rage. I'm um, not sure what that is. I'm thinking maybe it's one of the Castlevania games because there was a Sega Genesis uh, Castlevania. I don't. I don't know who the yeah. fairy is, and I th- if. I'm th- I'm probably wrong, but I'm thinking the girl on the far end is um. Oh, these people are horrible. Not captioning their Gold characters. Max. Streets of Rage, you got that one. Uh, X Men Clone Wars. Comic Zone Beyond Oasis. I forgot about that one. I need to yeah. I need to actually play that one. I've never played it before. Hey, first play material right there. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. Dynamite Heady? What the hell? See, I'm more of a Nintendo person when it comes to the oh older ones, but there are some Sega Genesis games that I know very well, and other ones I've never heard of. I need to change that. There's your little dude. There's Rye Star. Castlevania Bloodlines. Castlevania Bloodlines. I thought that was where the girl was going to come from. Fantasy Star 4. That's where one of the one of the girls is from. Okay. Absolutely nothing Perfect. about Shining Force. No. no. Oh, this is during its twilight years. So it was near the oh, I imagine. consoles, and I don't know where where, where the other I imagine they cracked in. down a Shining Force towards the end. Oh. Oh, Streets of Rage. You're thinking Shining it's Force CD, maybe, that was on Sega CD. Maybe, I don't know. You would, know. Mr. Fact Checker, you would have to bring up the timeline. I'm not pulling up a timeline of all the games. That would be monumentally annoying. Speaking of Sega, let me throw this story in. I had, um, what was it, my Dreamcast, I think it was. And the Dreamcast had a CD that had quite a few games on it. You're going to have to check that out, Scott. Nope. And it had... One of the Shining Forces on there, maybe a couple of the Shining Forces on there. And the ex that I was living with, her sister lived in the room adjacent to ours. And her boyfriend, Joey, whenever, like, we're in our room with our door closed. And there is a wall between us. But I would start up the Dreamcast. And, of course, the batteries being dead inside my VMU would go beep. You know, he would hear that and then come knock on the door and ask, is Samuel in there? Because he wanted to watch me play Shining Force. It was actually pretty damn cool because he knew the game and I had no damn clue. So he would help me find stuff. All right. All right. I figured it out. Here it is. Smash Pack Volume 1. Yes, that's it. Yes. And here's the list of the games. There's your Shining Force. Mm-hmm. Dude, I forgot about Virtual Cop. Vector Man, holy crap. <laughs> what the heck is Sega Swirl? It almost looks like, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, Yoshi's Fox Cookie. Oh. No, look at it. It almost looks like Yoshi's Cookie. Man, Golden Axe, Vector Man, Sonic, Dude, Streets I of Rage 2. Golden Axe. That's actually one game I should actually go back and play because I haven't played it yet. They're on, uh, was it Master System? They had a uh, Golden Axe RPG. Yeah, Golden Axe Warrior. Yeah, I need to, I should, there's another First Play Friday. Friday. Yep. Revenge of Shinobi. And I'll be honest with you, I've never played any of the Shining Force games. So that's another. I could never play Revenge of Shinobi because I just, I had no idea how the controls worked. Could never figure it out. Well, first you push buttons, and <laughs> no, um, it is it. If I remember correctly, um, Shinobi did have a little bit of a learning curve because if I remember right, you can jump off walls and stuff like that. Oh, well, you absolutely could. But to little, you know, to to sweet innocent little ten year old me, that meant nothing. <laughs> you know. I, sh- I need to do I just need to do a, a run of Sega Genesis RPGs because 
I've played Fantasy Star 2. Okay. Never played the original one on uh, Master System. I've never played 3, 4, whatever. Um, matter of fact, the most recent one I played was Fantasy Star Online, which obviously is a little bit of a different game. What? what wasn't Fantasy Star Online just like all, all pedophiles? Um... The good thing about that, not not the other Not part, when they the released it about, on, on Xbox. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the good thing about uh, Fantasy Star Online was you didn't necessarily have to play it online. Yeah, when when I was playing it, Fantasy Star Online, it was the, the one that they released on Windows and uh, Xbox One, and it was released like 15 years after the original one was released. Um so yeah, it was all those people begging Scott for feet picks. Uh, I think it was Fantasy Star Online Two, I believe, that just came. Yeah, Fantasy Online or Fantasy Star Online Two is that's that's the one. See, the thing is, Scott would make one of his self-deprecating jokes. They'd be like, "Show us some feet," and he'd be like, "I'm a dude with moobs," and they like, "That's good enough." They'd be like, "We need yeah. to go to those other those other streaming sites so we can give you some money." I'm kidding. That would be horrible. Hey, all we got to do is get one Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship and we're good to go. <laughs> no, not one bit. No. Are you sick of watching the same old things on Netflix? Try NordVPN oh, for God. a very small fee per month. <laughs> you're, you're, oh, uh, Nord, no. <laughs> Nord, no. <laughs> is that a Lord? NordVPN is going to be like, they've just done the work for us. <laughs> yeah, but they better but send getting us a back check. On track. Getting Are you back tired on track? of watching the same episodes over and over? Come watch with NordVPN. You can watch the. Watch Gordon out, Ramsay sorry. yell at somebody in another in uh, another uh, language. Have, are you are you sick of the fact that you've seen Friends a hundred times? Watch it in German. It's actually funny. Wow. I just want to specify that uh, the Vintage Gamers and affiliated websites and properties do not endorse the the thoughts of of uh, Andrew. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I wasn't a fan of Friends, but there were times where it was kind of funny. I'd like to point out that the only reason why I got into any form of streaming is because of Scott. So that that little uh, that little grin you see on his face right there. That means he endorses every single thing that comes out of my mouth. Hit the <sighs> mute button. Hit the mute button. Anyway. Can I send Scott like a giant easy button that he can hit when he wants to mute me for being stupid? I used to have one. <laughs> I gave it to Zach. I miss Zach. I know where he's staying. Well, we can talk he about was a, that He later. was a good talking head. We can talk about that later. About Maybe. Where I know where he is. Anyway. All right. I just have a feeling that we're going to get picked up by College Humor. No. Sorry, drop out. We are going way off the rails. What, what was our topic I'm, again? I'm trying, I'm trying to write this ship, gentlemen, with the Sega Genesis RPGs. We have Ease 3, which is a lot like Fazanadu. And that's one thing I've always wanted to play but never actually played. How did you pronounce it? What? Fazanadu? The first one? Oh, yeah. What am I supposed to say? Faxanadu? Well, you know what the funny thing is? There was a an official translation of... Uh, what do you call it? Of uh, some, some anime cartoon that was referencing it, and they said Faxanadu. Some anime cartoon. Yeah, it was... If you... I don't remember which... I was watching something about the game and the fact that it's a it's a uh, spinoff of the Dragon Slayer series, which wasn't yeah. actually released in the United States. And he was saying that he always gets corrected to say it's Fazanadu. But he was saying that he's always said Faxanadu and he played a clip from some... some officially translated anime and they said Faxanadu. So 
the way I see it, who cares? If, as long as people know what you're talking about, take it. Yeah. I'll still give you a hard time for saying it that way because whatever. There is another Sega Genesis RPG that I tried to play on the PSP that Scott officially did jailbreak for me. And you mean the one worked. I broke for myself and then gave you mine when my cat yeah. knocked it yeah. off and broke the yeah, screen? Shut up. You ruined it. You're trying to make him feel bad. And... But, uh, <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, Scott, you're not allowed to, you're not, you can't speak ill of those cats. I love your cats. Unfortunately, both of them are gone. I'll tell you later. You, the Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah well. Anyway. No, that, makes me really, that makes me really sad because I lost my old cat too. So, like. Well, one got very sick and we took him to the vet, and the only thing they could do is put him down. And that was Fuzzy. Or not Fuzzy, Taffy. And then uh, we, my sister came home from work one day, and, and Fuzzy was just laying there right next to the front door. And like like a dog, when he heard his people coming home, he would run to the front door, which means that either he was at the front door waiting for us to come home or he thought we were coming home and he ran to the door, which kind of makes it a little bit sad. I'm, I am so, so sorry to hear that. Yeah, and it was within the last I hate, I hate that, uh, that we're doing this on an episode of the podcast. That's okay. Um, they were good cats. They had long run. They had long runs, and they were loved. Um, if anyway. you go, if you go back on uh, the Vintage Gamer YouTube, um, you can act. Uh, you you might have to go to the, the uh, old Disagreeable TV YouTube channel. Good. Um, you can see, uh, uh, me interacting with Taffy while Scott's, uh, fiddling around with his green screen. Yeah, <laughs> fiddling on what. On one of uh one of our scu- uh, little scuff videos that we did, um, <laughs> Scott's in the background stapling green screen up, and I'm just talking. <laughs> yeah, my my makeshift green screen was uh, dollar store uh, poster board that was bright green. You know, um, just just to kind of get back on topic, uh, Vector Man. Yes. Was a bright green character. Mm-hmm. Um, that game was that was one of those wild Sega he was a games. Green screen. He was. He was. Um, the current meta over on Twitch is to apparently green screen your pants. So uh, that's something that's going on. I never um, understood but, uh, those kinds of things. I, I'm just too old. I, I agree, and I'm I'm ten years younger than you, so. You, you know who I'll else make you cry. Uh, was on the Sega Genesis that was green? Wasn't there um, one of Sonic's little girlfriends was green? No, his Sonic's girlfriend was pink. Yeah. But there was That's... Booger Man, a pick and flick adventure. Oh, oh my God. God. I, I think I remember that game. Yeah. That, that name, though, was, reminds me of one of the Beavis and Butthead games because they were sitting on rooftops trying to flick boogers at people. Um, then there was a, a game for the Atari that I'm not going to describe the game. The name itself will give you give it away, but it was not made for kids. And that was a game called Beat 'Em and Eat 'Em. Um, so Scott bringing up the Custer's Revenge out here. I did not mention mm-hmm. Custer's Revenge. No, but you mentioned a game that's in the same vein. Yep. Oh God, that would be that would be like an episode for after, for uh, Vintage View After Dark. That's going no. up on the Patreon. You're gonna have to go to Blue Twitch for that one. <laughs> and we have to put it on the hub site. <laughs> anyway, we're we're just we're going off the rails right now. So I pulled a list of all Sonic characters, and there's nobody that's green. There's got to be. It's like a like a hawk or something. There's got to be a green one. There's no way. There's no green character. Who who the heck sent me a message at this time in the morning? Well, night. Um, my phone across the room. The hedgehog. 
I don't know whether that's a real thing, but I'm seeing Scourge the Hedgehog. Really? Uh, um, je- well, again, I mean, it's the internet, so it could be anything. This could be a fanfic where... Uh, no, no, Sam, don't say it. Don't, yeah. Do not speak aloud of that sin. Hey, as long as it's not slash fake, we're good. Um, but there was a crocodile. I, I pulled the crocodile. Up, I pulled these guys up. There's yeah, but you're not looking hard enough. <laughs> there's according to this, there's Sonic, Amy, Knuckles, Shadow, Rouge, Ro, or Ivo Robotnik or Eggman. Then there's Cookies and Cream, Tails, and then some purple thing. I forgot who that one is. Hang on, I found him. I'm gonna see if I can't hold on. Send you a picture of him without it being all scuff. Oh, Blaze the Cat. I really just like that word. That that purple one is Blaze the Cat. You know, let's let's talk about Sonic Adventure for a few minutes. How part of the game you could literally play on the VMU away from the, the console. Yeah. That was a really cool effect. I mean, that was kind of like having the Switch before the Switch, because it's like, okay, I'm done playing the console. I'm going to take this little thing with me that, in my experience, the battery life on the VMU sucked. Maybe it was just the battery. Yep. I don't know, but okay. I think I got no, like two I mean, days of battery really was. I had like I two days like of battery, so I don't know. I was just like, yeah. His name is Dr. Robotnik, and yet it's been Eggman. I grew up with him as Dr. Robotnik. I don't know if I'm from the bad timeline or what, but I don't know what happened when he became Dr. Eggman. I think that was Japan, and then naturally they just stopped caring about differentiating between American market and Japanese market, and they just went with what they originally used in Japan. Yeah, um, well, I think the Jet the Hawk is his name. Um, I do believe... That yeah, it sounds really close to something that you shouldn't say online. Anyway, I do believe, though, that um, the official thing is is Sonic calls him Eggman because he's fat, but his real name is Ivo Robotnik. Because if, if, if you watch the Sonic movies, he uses, or they, they call him both. Yeah, I just... And maybe, I, even I though... I feel like I'm from a bad timeline because I don't know when it changed. Um... Probably somewhere around the the uh, uh, Dreamcast or, or or so because before that I remember the first like the Sega Genesis games at least he was referred to as Doctor Robotnik. Yeah, uh, but and then was, like all of yeah. a sudden I've been introduced to some weird new cartoon where it's Sonic and he has a brother and a sister and they're in a band. Oh, are, you referring, are you referring that win where he's wearing the bandana around his neck or something? No, that's Sonic Boom. I see. I don't even. God, I can't even keep up Sonic with it. I like the original. To me, the Sonic cartoons are not good if they don't have uh, uh, Urkel being Sonic. Jaleel, Jaleel White, White is the perfect voice for Sonic, as far as I'm concerned. Probably because he was the first. Yeah, he was the OG. I, I can back that. Um, but no, like all like. Probably within the last like five years, I've been more exposed to Sonic content than I've ever been before because yeah, I have a exposed. I have a seven year old nephew. But it's like there's so much more than I ever thought there was. Uh-oh. Like I I was aware of the um, the horrific horrific things on the internet of Sonic, but I was like I didn't know about Sonic Underground existing. I didn't know about. Um, the weird backstory that Shadow has, which, uh, fun fact, Shadow the Hedgehog and Mute. You're cutting out. Shadow the Hedgehog and Mewtwo from Pokemon have the exact same backstory. Hmm. Which backstory is older, I wonder? Uh, I would imagine it's Mewtwo. Probably, because... When did Shadow debut? I don't know. I think he, uh, from my recollection, and again, I probably wrong. Uh, he was a GameCube game. No, I think it was Dreamcast originally. Maybe 
perhaps. No, I, I think you're thinking oh, of, Mecha been... Son- of Metal Sonic. No, that was it Sega Genesis. Been, um... Sonic Adventure 2 was first Okay, appearance. yeah, that's what I was going to say, yeah. I, I was right. Which is I, I feel good about that, actually. <laughs> Which is weird. But in the GameCube game, didn't he have, like, a Mac 10 or something? No, oh, he, well, yes. he, he had a handgun, I know that. He had a gun, yeah, yeah. Um, what year did it come out? Let me click on that real quick. 1902. No, I'm just kidding. Um, 2001. So Mewtwo, okay. Mewtwo okay. I think, was Mewtwo one of the originals? One of the OGs? Yeah, yeah Mewtwo, one of the uh, Mewtwo was 96. So, yeah. yeah. Shame on you, Sonic. Well, not Sonic. Sonic Team. Uh, and te- Well, so technically Mewtwo didn't get his back story until 99, but uh, still. Well, yeah, it's still... I mean, it, it may have been... First movie. Well, it may have also been either subconscious or it just may have been a weird coincidence because I was I created a character in my most recent D and D thing uh, where I'm an Aarakocra, so I'm I'm a bird person. But my character grew up kind of as a thief, and then his friend, my my best friend, got killed and stuff. And I decided that I wasn't going to let anyone get hurt, and I was going to live in the shadows. So I, be, I was a shadow ninja character. And I was, as I was describing my character, he's like, yeah, so you're basically Batman. And I'm like, yeah, apparently. <laughs> I wasn't doing it on purpose, but I basically kind of... Just another instance of Simpsons did it. You know, I'm not going to say they predicted the future. I will say there's been so many episodes, they're bound to get some things right. Although, like, it's like Sam said earlier, if you say the same thing over and over again, it's a. Although I will say that there's a picture that's right next to a uh, screen cap from the, the Simpsons, and they looked almost identical. It was Trump coming down some stairs. Yes. And that was creepy, though. But I mean, yeah, Disney I mean, owning Fox. I mean, Disney owning Fox. I mean, come on, that was that was kind of inevitable. Pretty sure Disney, Disney will own Warner Brothers, Brothers eventually. See, I I don't know. That's that's where <laughs> things get really sticky. Is because Warner Brothers has been around longer than Disney. Disney's arguably much bigger of a company, though. Are they though? Probably they they make billions of dollars. I mean, how many Warner Brothers theme parks do you know of? There's a few, but not a lot. There's, and aren't yeah, those all Universal all- Studios? They're called Six Flags. Oh, it's, okay, it's Six Flags. I was thinking Universal Studios. That yeah, you you know why you always think Universal Studios because it's Universal. You know what we yeah. do need again that, that'll have there. Disney and Warner Brothers maybe making a deal again. We need Another a Roger, Roger, Roger Rabbit too. Yeah, but Bob Hodgkins is dead. Yeah, they can't redo it without him. Yeah. CG maybe. Well, I mean, no, if, they they make a, have, if they were making a new one, if they just had Roger new, Rabbit, if they were making a new oh, one with a new story, yeah, without like Bob Hobbs, but he was the main character, no, 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 no. so I don't know how that would I've work. I've got it. He has to go into Toon, <sighs> Toontown and become a cartoon himself. So therefore, he's in Toontown as a cartoon. Okay, so and Roger okay. Rabbit is an actual real fucking rabbit. No. So I, I have to bring up, since we're on this cover, on this topic, I have to bring up the uh, elephant in the room, Wreck-It Ralph. I was thinking that, too. Sonic so and Mario. My, my favorite part about Wreck-It Ralph is there is a uh, a little bit of trivia where Disney had to commu- send communications back and forth between Nintendo and, uh, uh, and Sega to get character heights right. And Nintendo had one statement, and it was that Bowser cannot be shorter than anyone. <laughs> and Sega kept responding with, "Okay, well, just so you know, in our in canon lore, Zangief is eight foot six. And so Nintendo would respond, "Well, technically, Bowser is nine. So they would respond with, "Oh, well, just so you know, Zangief actually is supposed." You were and cutting out like crazy. Going. And they, they they would throw other characters in. They'd be like, "Okay, well." Zangief's only 9'3". Bowser's 10 foot tall. Well, just so you know, uh, Dr. Eggman is 11 feet tall. You know, and you know who... A point uh, that they actually had to send um, 
John C. Riley to talk to both of them, the representative from Nintendo and Sega, to get them to actually settle down and just. I hate my mic stand. Terms. You know, I would love more movies in that universe, not necessarily with Wreck It Ralph, but in that arcade universe thing. I think that would be cool. That'd be a lot of fun, especially if they got more um, uh, real properties to play with. Incorporate consoles and online gaming into it? No, because no. Because you know <laughs> it's only going to be 10 seconds before someone, drop, before someone drops an end bomb. Oh. Well, no, it's the, yeah. it's the characters, it's true, not the players in their little Yes, universes. exactly. Anyway, so let's go like, back the, to the Sega. That, well, the We're, all those... Spartans were running in Ready Player One and none of them was saying a slur. Well, have you read the book? I read the first half. <laughs> I read both. I, I really lost a lot of um a lot of love for the book when he referred to himself as chubby but not fat. Portly. Round. Anyway, Sonic. So man shape. What would you like to see Sonic, not Sonic, Sega, do now? Dreamcast 2. Just another another classic side-scroller Sonic game. Um, Sonic Mania. And isn't Sonic Mania just a remake of 1, 2, and 3, though? No. It actually originally... it, it yeah. So it originally started as a fan a fan game until sonic or not sonic the sonic team saw what this guy was doing with the game and hired him and it became a, uh, an official thing so this game right here is not a remake it is its own game every level is very different than the last it plays and looks like can, a 16 bit cart- Sonic. I can hold cartridges up to the camera too. Don't do make too. me go don't make me look for my, my 3DS games. I've got two packages and be like, here's some games. Here's some more games. I'm holding yeah. up my cartridges too, but nobody can see them. Don't worry, Sam. We'll get video on you one day. Oh, yeah. he doesn't want it because he's too ugly. I'll have to get plastic surgery first. Okay, but we let I Scott. Hey. I'm profile. just brave. I know what we do. We get Sam a bag that has the 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 face that he's on that he's got right there, so we can wear that and have that on camera and be like moving around. And no, you know what we should, no with our with our first uh, our first NordVPN sponsorship oh, check, we hit, we get him a V two <laughs> bottle. I I was actually telling talking to him about that. Um, he's like no, because it would just use his camera to see what he's doing and then translate it to a character online. He's like, I don't want an anime looking character. I'm like, dude. We'll find someone to make you an 8-bit character. I said, if we animated my avatar like Terrence and Philip from South Park, I would be totally cool with that. Don't you want to date my avatar? Okay, now now it's a Felicia Day reference. No. No. (laughs) No, You you keep her name out of your mouth, sir. What, are you going to come over here and slap me? Yes. (laughs) Only a 16-hour drive. I can do that and be back for work. No, I can't. I work in I work in less than twelve hours. Never mind. Ha. I can absolutely see doing the Terrence and Feld. That'd be. Hilarious. We we all kind of stopped talking. So, are we? We all, we all got lost. We all immediately turned into NPCs for a second. <laughs> nope. No, then What's I got to do the T pose. Uh oh! People just saw what shirt I'm wearing. No. Scooby Doo, son. Oh, no, you're fired. <laughs> you're on a, this is a Sonic episode, and you're talking, and you're repping Mario. Done. Kill it. Actually, my Sonic shirt has a big hole in the side, so I, I decided not to wear it. In the side that we can't see. Uh, if I move right, it'll rip even more. You don't want you don't want to have it ripped and, you know, have nipple gate going on. Hey, I, I, put my, I put a shirt on for this. I, so I, said, I put I said pants no. on for this. Again, they, I I haven't had like I, for all you know, I'm bare ass in my chair right now. 
you know, I could see you doing that. That's the sad part. Give him alcohol and his clothes fall off. Hey, tequila makes me sexy. What can I say? Sam's probably over here horrified. That's why he's not talking. Anyway, so I'm just reading all my notes here, wondering why I even took notes because we talked about cats and nipples <laughs> and other things other than Sega. You know, it's so okay. what, okay. else, what do we have in the what do you have in the notes okay. we have not talked about? Not that I wanted to talk about the terrible at games things that Sega didn't do but licensed. Not that I wanted to talk about the well, well Scott talked about the CDX earlier. Uh, that that thing was my was favorite console. Awesome. Yeah, that thing was awesome. Why did I but sell there's only Well, that's the thing. We're all stupid. We all do that shit. But I believe that there's only yeah. one thing that could one up. Get it? I said one. Oh, it's probably a Nintendo thing. The, the no, CDX. actually, I think it's just a generic video game thing. No, because yeah. Sega, they were called Free Men. Or an that extra sounds, guy. That sounds like something else. Um, <laughs> the Pioneer Pack. Remember with the laser disc player? No. It had the little module. They had one for Turbo, Tur- Turbo, 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 Turbo Graphics and Sega Genesis. And I what? think. What? Yeah. And the oh, whole. That's not something thing. I should put on, on stream. Hold on. They Go had. On. You could, so you could do laser. Di- they had laser disc games for Sega Genesis. No, what it was is uh, Pioneer had made a laser disc player, and in the front there were two little slots, and you could put in like a, a some yeah, you could put in a Sega Genesis model uh, pack, blah blah blah, and it would just play. It had the controller ports on it. It had the cartridge slot right there. Where is the? And, is that the uh, cartridge slot right here? The thing right above the cartridge. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, where you, it, basically it looks like you put an eight track in there. See, yeah, that's. I did not actually know that, honestly. Because I think they were so rare, nobody well, really bought them. It looks like it's Japan. It says JP up here in the in the image. They, they made them in America too, I did believe. Oh, yeah, nineteen ninety three cool. in America. Five hundred ninety nine dollars too. But, apparently, I don't know. Well, that's what I was just saying. The, they had the Turbo Graphics um, eighteen, I think it was. Or Turbo Graphic 16, derp. Um, but yeah, it basically just used the audio and the power. Well, audio, video, and the power. And it had nothing to do with the laser disc at all. So this is just an add on to the other. And apparently, you put the Sega CD game in the other thing. Well, look for the, uh, the Pioneer laser disc. It's right there at the top. If you click on it, the laser active. Yeah. So that's what you had. Oh, and then you had the specially the branded controller. controllers. Yeah, you've got the specially branded controllers. Oh, it only had one slot? Okay, see, that's where my faulty memory comes in. Huh. Well, maybe it was three packs no, because, kind of, yeah, they had the two. NEC. It's got, it's got two controller ports down here. One's underneath. What? Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is, as far as like, I thought you could put two packs in there, like you could put the. Uh, the Sega Genesis and the Turbo Graphics in there, but oh, I was wrong. Oh, you know what? That's okay. I am an idiot. Yeah, you're probably right. Scott, you're not an idiot. You're just dumb. Anyway, <coughs> your face. But is if dumb. anything could, yes, if very. Anything could free man <laughs> the CDX. I think it would be that. That's the only pit, the only part of Sega history that I think would one up the CDX. I didn't. I was unaware of it. That actually, honestly, would be freaking cool. That's that's real cool. Yeah. Like what? We you need to. Pay when this gets uploaded dollars. to uh to to YouTube, we need to put a timestamp on that because that's that's cool. You know, I would yeah, pay tens pay of dollars for that. Just for the controllers. I would pay tens of dollars for it. The problem I is, pay, I would pay twenties of dollars. <laughs> back in the day. Goodwills around the country probably had those in stacks. Couldn't sell them. They probably and now, them. probably. That would have been that would have been a cool piece to have right there. That is yeah, it would. that's some interesting stuff. Um, I do know that the Sega CD was originally going to support LaserDisc uh, tech on it. Well, no, that's uh, VCDs. 
or a CD. Oh yeah, was yeah. It CD plus. I think so. CDGs was it? Then, I don't remember. It, I think it was CD plus because I have a very old comic with an ad in it for Final Fantasy IV on CD plus on the Sega CD. I think it's Final Fantasy because that was Nintendo only until PlayStation. I I'm fairly certain it was I'm fairly certain it's Final Fantasy. Unless it unless I'm stupid and it's Fantasy Star. Fantasy hey, Star we're, was we're a Sega C D game. Tonight. I'm hiding behind my pop screen so that way I can avoid being embarrassed. Um, what? It's, I'm pulling up the uh, the thing here. Now, the there was a slot in the back of the Sega Saturn, not the memory card, but where you put in the battery. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a slot there that I think there was a module that supported that kind of stuff. So maybe it was a Sega Saturn? Question mark? Maybe. Could you Could you imagine... If uh, Saturn had like a little module you could plug into the back and use the cartridge slot since it was literally a Sega Genesis form factor to play Genesis games on it. Or so 32X it was basically, you're saying, basically you're saying, can you imagine a Hyperkin Retron 3? No, because the Dreamcast is a different, uh, not, the Saturn was a totally different system and it was a CD based. Dude, that's what they need to do. There needs to be more disc-based emulation consoles. Well, I mean, there's, there, there aren't because discs don't suffer from the data rot that cartridges do. Um, yeah, they do. Um, there is something called the Polymega, which is actually freaking cool. Um, yeah. I found the Sega Saturn video CD card. Um, I believe okay. it was Japanese only. And basically, it slid into the back of the console, and it decoded the video CDs. That's cool. That's pre that, that is pretty cool. So, the Polymega is a retro game system that I would love. And what it is... Let me pull up the screen. It uh, basically is a modular game system that it plays the CD-based games without any issue. But if you want to play cartridge-based, they have modules that, that just kind of sit on top. And they have controller slots and everything else. So the, the main console is the little... Come on. These pictures suck. All right, so underneath the console, that little slit right there where you put the disc in, that is the main console. And then the bit, that the thick bit with the con with the controller slots, those are where the, the uh, uh, you know, the guts for actually playing the, the, the console. The, my brain's not working. The, the cartridge-based games. Yeah. We've been recording for a hot minute. You're starting to burn out. No, my brain wasn't working to begin with, and Sam's like, hey, let's record. I'm like, uh, okay. Hey, don't blame me. I'm I will just blame trying to you get every day out. of the week. All there right, we then. You got $800? Then I'm to... taking that NordVPN money. Are you sick of watching the same things on B? I would love them to give me money. I would, use I would accept for... any payday that I could get. So, I, We accept payment in Bitcoin. <laughs> Two Bitcoin, please. We, I I accept um I, I accept cashiers checks, money orders, cash. I well, the only good thing favors, about Bitcoin you know? is Bitcoin. Oh God, it's gone way up lately. One Bitcoin is worth seventy. There's like sixty-seven thousand five hundred and thirty-one dollars. And I had a chance to buy them at like five cents per per coin at the beginning. I'm like, oh, it's stupid. I'm not going to do it. All right. We'll make our own. We'll make our own Bitcoin. 
with strippers and blackjack. Mm-hmm. And forget about the Bitcoin. Wasn't there a Scooby Doo game on Sega Genesis? Probably. That is a good question. I know there was one on PlayStation, like PS One. Uh, yes, Scooby Doo Mystery. Yep. <laughs> we both nailed it at the same time. Giggity. It says Super Nintendo, but it was also out on the Mega Drive. Okay, I do remember playing that. Yep. And then there was also like a bunch of um, Disney games that would that came out of the Genesis. Oh, f- like oh yeah, Lion King dude. And, one of uh, the Toy Story. honestly one of the hardest Disney games that was ever released on Sega Genesis is one that I owned. I could not get past the second level. You want to take a Aladdin? guess what that was? Was it Castle either Aladdin or, or Lion King? Lion King. <laughs> Dude, level two yeah. on Lion King, to me, that is the hardest oh. video game level I have ever played. Oh, when that you one, had that to get rough. flung? Hmm? When you had to get flung by the, yes. the giraffe and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, that one, I, it, it, I you know, if I played it now and I, and I just kept up with it, no. I could probably get past no. it, but I always rage quit no. so much that I'm like, nope, no, um. I'm telling had, you right now. Uh, I had that Lion King game on one of the little Sega handhelds. Remember, you remember those? Oh yeah, dude! Holy crap! We've been talking for two hours. This is our longest episode. All right, that's good enough for NordVPN and <laughs> Shadow Raid Legends, or whatever the fuck they're called. Raid Shadow Legends. Hey, he can do Raid Shadow Legends. You know, I'll do you're literally Lord advertising Lord. for free for those two companies because they're never going to pay us because they're never going to find us. Nobody fucking listens to us. You, who are we advertising to? Hey man, us, hey. the people who actually go back through. Hi, hey, Steve. We're, by the we're way, getting, I'll, we're I'll getting double digits Steve. on views. We know might, Steve's listening. I mean, they may, may be the same four people watching or <laughs> like five times each. Yeah. No, we're not... We're not Wrestle Talk. We're not. Uh, we're not. We're not Matt Pat. We're not Game Theory. Don't worry about it. No, Did I'm you just, see saying, that I'm just saying. It's not that the nobody ring is watching. It's just not enough people are watching to be useful. What did you just say, Sam? Did you see that new Dark Side of the Ring episode? No, but I really want to because it's. Um, they haven't done the Ric Flair one yet, and it's driving me crazy. I tell you, they screwed up with the Terry Gordy one. Was the fact that they put it on um, their website Vice for free? Yeah, like the Terry Gordy one. They, usually they block it, but this one they didn't. Well, this has become yeah. the wrestling cast. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Scott. Love no, you. <laughs> no. Um. But no, seriously. Uh. The Sega Genesis was a formative console for any kid to, that grew up in the 90s. Uh, whether you were like me, literally growing up in the 90s, or you were like Scott, already 13 and getting your first job in the 90s. I was 10 when the 90s started, thank you. You, you heard it here, guys. He was 23. Working his way into his first management position that he never got. Mm-hmm. You like how he showed up on one episode and he's not going to show up again? No, I'll, I will absolutely be here again. Just oh no, I I, like, I won't tell you when we're doing it. <laughs> I will I will I'll worm my him. way into your heart. <laughs> Scott and I go go back fairly far. I think Sam and Scott go back, but uh, Scott was wearing a red shirt one day, and he decided to block my path when I take a leap. The call center that we worked at, and next thing you know, friends. I was I was not actually blocking your way. I stepped out of the way. I said, you, you shall not pass. And then he passed me anyway and went pee. And then we started talking later. And then, you know. Yep. And now I'm involved very deeply in a lot of his creative endeavors. So Half the time, I help you what you want to do. And then it just dies. And I just keep going with other things. Yeah. I, I feel like what will be better is because I, uh, I have... Super bad ADHD, so it'll just be better for me to just be part of his stuff. Just tag along. Exactly. Yeah, he's gonna, I, be, I our, be, he's gonna yeah. be the new Fifi. I I will absolutely be the new Fifi. Just do not call. 
All right, Fifi. <laughs> I will. I will Sandra. drive. I will drive to. Um. I will drive to Pawnee, Indiana, just to punch you. Yeah, sure. That's exactly where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> just ask for the big fat bearded guy. If that's even Pawnee, a real place, good. I have a it's feeling not. that that's not going to narrow it down. It's no, not. Not it's, in uh, Indiana. No. Pawnee is uh it it's it's a map of Gary, Indiana that's flipped upside down. But uh well just remember though the, you can always ask for or ask people ask around for the best beard on YouTube as done by Ed two oh nine or whatever the heck his name was. Oh we, yeah, we don't talk about him. <laughs> anyway. Sounds like there's some beef. Um uh, well, I mean, it could just be made up in my head, but I had released an article on TVG and then literally like I was kind of promoting it in my shitty little YouTube videos that I was doing for like video game pickups and whatnot. And then the dude who said that to me, he ended up doing a video which was better than an article like a week later. And he got thousands of views, and everybody's like, oh my god, look, he cracked the code. And I'm going, no, he didn't. Like, I found that information out from somebody else, and then I kind of used my stuff and made the article about it. And then he, again, maybe just made up in my head, made the video a week after I posted the article, and everybody was just fucking falling in love with it. Oh, thank you. That's great. Now we know which NES games to look at to find the, the uh, converter. Thank you. You're the person, that, only person that's ever told us this. But, you know, I mean, it, I'm over it. I'm not jealous. Uh, and no no ill will towards the uh, You know, I'm over it. It's okay. <laughs> it's all well, hey, blood under the bridge. Blood under the bridge. Well, hey, guess what? Now you're involved. In, now you got the vintage view. You got Scott. You got me. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, join, I'm gonna try and join in as often as I can because this has been a, this has actually been the probably the best part of my week. So I'm gonna be I'm a fixture now. Great. Should, I, I was gonna I was bring... gonna say. Oh, good. What I was gonna say is I was gonna be like, yeah, I've got all that stuff. So my my career has fallen pretty damn far. But you you kind of broke my heart with this has been the best part of my week, and I'm going, don't do it, man. Don't ruin it for him. No, it's all right. See, at the very least, he loves it. At the very least, Andrew can can uh, send us some clips um, that he can record at work. Like, hey, look, this came in today. Yeah. You should, you know, hey. so I can't send you clips of things that came in. I can send you clips of things that are coming out for sale. Well, I mean, this week in the pawn shop, and just say, "Hey, look, we sold a Sega 32X, or you know, something like that." Dude, if I don't know, we've got if something something rare or weird comes in. I hate I hate this fucking city because we've got like ten retro gaming stores now. Really? We went. Yeah, we went from having like one one being all the way on far west Grant. To now we have uh, those toys that made us, or no, it's uh, those wonderful toys. Uh, the guy, uh, the guy who got the toys that made us show flicks. We yeah, got uh, as long as you don't mention that dude on Fourth Ave that had that show on Netflix, Slobby I Robbie or whatever it was. Yeah, Slobby Robbie. Oh, dude, that was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. A friend of mine gonna, went into a gonna... store and said he's d-bag yeah uh but we now have retro gaming stores popping up everywhere we I mean, dude, that's we got cool like, though we got like three new comic shops that opened up and they're not they're they're, they're nothing special but like there was a villain still better expanding. here heroes and villains stands head and shoulders over any other comic i would not be surprised Based. if heroes and villains is like you know what let's get in the retro game stuff and open up yet another storefront next door to where they are now well, so they have, I don't know how long it's been since you were there, but they have uh, the comic side, they have the gaming side, and they now have a vinyl. Oh, that's new. Yeah. So, like, like big, big, big shout out to Heroes and Villains. Uh, uh, you can't really see it because it's, like, this shelf, but down, full of trade paperbacks that all came from Heroes and Villains. Just... Just so you know, that's where 
Andrew used to spend all of his time. I, I, they, they should have been paying me to be there. Now that we mentioned them, you, you should, they should pay you to, you know, keep mentioning them every, every episode. I absolutely will drop them every episode because I'll be like, hey, guys, guess what I did? I went to yours and And guess what? Guess what? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I swear to God, if you pull up a... Oh, okay. I was going to say, I swear to God, if you, if you pull out a Sonic the Hedgehog comic that you got from, like, Free Comic Book Day, I'd be like, dude, there you go. No. No. No, that I was have, last year I that had Free... That rocks. Dude. That's weak. What? Hold on. I got to open my bag. Senor. <laughs> okay, hang on. I've also got my dice tower, my Demogorgon statue. Dude. Each, it's got packet or pockets for each, every single type of die. Now we're getting into a, into a, you know, pissing contest here. We have two fully grown gentlemen showing off the size of their bags. I mean, no, our sacks. My wife bought me this for our anniversary. But yet, it is you a don't dice play. tray. I do play. Mm. Uh, I have a Mutants and Masterminds game starting next week. Well, there you go. Well, yeah. you should be a DM and you should play I a, a DM. D&D based uh, game, but set where we're, you know, characters going somehow into a video game world. I'm, I'm joking, but now I see, I see the wheels turning in that brain of yours. Um, I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a Pokemon sticker to censor myself because I don't want any chance of monetization being removed, but Oh, you can do it. We won't get monetized. Okay. <laughs> um, I will absolutely run that game for you and Sam and and, and one, a minimum one other player. I don't think Sam two. would want to play D&D. He's not nerdy enough. D &D Unless video it involves game. guitars. Uh, I will absolutely... Maybe. Sam, you can be a bard Yeah. who plays 8-bit yeah. guitar music. He probably even has a pedal that makes him sound 8-bit, or he can make one. You you know I did because I showed it to you. Go to my Facebook and yeah, show but do it you still have else. it? Is what I'm trying to say. What would I do with it? Shove it up my butt? I thought this you used to created... sell those. This no, just I've never so... sold a pedal. You should. This whole conversation has become so masturbatory. We're not even <laughs> on the main topic of anything anymore. We have we have gone fully off the right, rails. We are over two this hours. Is, we should end this because this is it is now. This the one that showed up as like the, the episode that was deleted. You this have is, to pay to access this one. We are now. This immediately go for, move on in post episode 10. We are now one hour into Sam's birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. I'm not singing it because uh, I hate that stupid yeah, song. I'm, Happy birthday to you. I will mute you. It is actually, uh, I think it is public domain, so it's it's not going to be demonetized. No, but I hate the song because it's, yeah. no, actually, I think AOL last I knew owned it, but since Time Warner owns AOL, that means that Warner Brothers <laughs> owns Happy Birthday. That's happy, weird. happy birthday from all of us to you. Happy, happy anyway. birthday. We wish it was our birthday, too. So I apologize that this episode is about twice the length of our other ones, mostly because we've been going off topic every five minutes. Don't apologize. That's what they're here for. They're here for the scuff. It's mostly because of NordVPN. Oh. Have a free oh. trial with our code TVV10. Also, I wish that the, was a real code. With the code, with the code <laughs> SSA, you can also get 1,000 free silver in Raid Shadow Legends. Because it can't be a Disclaimer, these are not real codes. This is not real. <laughs> As you can see from the way my hair is, all, it, the exhaustion is hitting. So uh, I guess it's time. I guess it's looking like we're going to be signing off, isn't it? Probably. If Any last words about off, Sega people? Off. Any any last words about Sega? 
Nintendo um, used to make playing cards. Sega made games for for the military bases. I yeah, think basically Sega coiner won. operated right. games like uh, like those pre pinball games. You know, where you put the coin in and the ball comes down and you have to hit it with the bat, like baseball or you know things like those kinds of games. Probably, uh, I think Sega should have won the war and uh, Sonic should be more popular than Mario. Personally, I am more of a Mario fan, but when you think about it, like I said earlier, Mario, or not Mario, Nintendo may be considered the innovators now, but Sega did it first. They they truly did. They, they were the first per- people to have uh, a built-in game in their consoles. I'm not talking about like the Pong clones and stuff. Um, but in the age of cartridges, they had a built-in game, which no other person did at the time. They are the first console to have a headphone jack. Okay, I say mm-hmm. that as a joke, but it's it is the truth. They're the first people to literally put an Ethernet or a phone jack on their console so you can get online with it. I mean, they, they really were the innovators before Nintendo were becoming known as the innovators. And now there's yep. crickets again. All right, people. We have been talking for entirely too long. So I apologize if this takes you a week to listen to, but hey, by the time you're done listening to it, we have another episode coming out. Uh, just keep in mind Maybe. we have our socials in the the gobbledygook underneath in the description. Mm-hmm. We also have uh, our website at thevintagegamers.com. Not at, but anyway. Um, we'll see you guys later. This has been Scott. This has been Andrew for the first time and really not the last time. Nah, we'll have you back. And then there's that Sam guy. Sam yeah, Gamgee. screw him. He's not coming back. We're firing him. Wait, well, he's what? already in hell. I, we, I told him to go to hell, and he's sitting right there on camera in hell, if you notice. so. That's not hell. That's Avernus. All right, so I guess this is the last thing that we're going to be saying about... Sega! Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, everyone. It's Fifi. That's, like, totally it for today's Vintage View podcast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you had a blast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more retro gaming vibes. You guys rock. Seriously. Catch you in the next episode. Peace out.